It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Golden Lure. Right now, Hoppy and California are leading a cattle drive to the railhead at El Campo. After passing through the tough outpost town of Warpaint, Hoppy and his cowwaddies halt their herd in the Bar 8 range for water before pushing on. Near the veranda of the weather-beaten ranch house, Hoppy and California talk things over with the gray-haired ranch owner, their old friend, Smiley Haynes. Yeah, we ran into an old prospector in these two burrows heading for war paint as we crossed your range, Smiley. Yeah, that must have been Dusty Jones, Hoppy. He'd been staying with me a couple of days. Old Desert Rat finally struck it rich up in the hill country, and... Now he's aiming to spend some of his gold back in civilization. <laughs> if you call war paint civilization, I'm the queen of Sheba. <laughs> well, California, if you lived in the desert as long as Dusty has, with nobody to talk to except a pair of floppy at burrows. Sure, sure. I reckon even a couple of honky-tonks in a general store looks like Dodge City to old Dusty. He said something about you selling the bar eight, Smiley. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, Hoppy. What with rustlers robbing me blind, and most of my water holes turning alkali, I, well, I've just about given up. Rustlers? Yeah, the smoothest working gang of cow thieves that ever hit this territory. All the ranchers have reported losses, but uh, I guess I'm the first one they really cleaned out. Well, what about the sheriff? What's he doing about it? <laughs> Running around in circles, that's what he's doing. Oh, uh, I've had to let all my cow hands go. Been trying to run what's left single handed, but it's no go. I figure I can get Judge Flint to make me an offer. He runs the Clover Leaf Ranch just north of here. I'm sorry to hear this, Smiley. I wish we could hang around a few days and look into this rustling outfit. Well, but... thanks, Hoppy, but I've, I've made up my mind to pull out. In fact, there's already sent for my daughter, Connie. The, your, your daughter? Well, did you know I had one? I sent Connie to school in St. Louis after her mom died. Hey, here, here, I got, got a picture in the wall here. See? See? Well, I'll be doggone. Look at them pigtails. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah, oh, that's a mighty cute little girl, Smiley. Connie ought to be arriving on the train in El Campo just, well, just about the time you get there, Hobby. Stagecoach for war paint don't leave El Campo but once a week, and I... I thought if you if you didn't mind... You uh, mean, uh, will I bring her back uh, when we return? If it's not too much trouble. You bet your life I'll bring her back with us. Be glad to. Uh, can she ride? Uh, she could ride before she could walk. Just you leave it to me, Smiley. The boys now see that she arrives here PDQ. Pretty darn quick. Sure. Uh, <laughs> thanks, boys. Uh, I sure appreciate it. Afraid Smiley's little gal didn't get into El Campo on that train after all, California. Station agent says he didn't see any youngster get off. Well, he, he might have just missed seeing her. Maybe. Here's the Wells Fargo Express office. She may have come directly here to inquire about the next Wells Fargo coach going north. Hey, there ain't nobody here but that gal sitting on a bench. Pardon me, have you seen the agent? We're looking for him ourselves, miss. By the way, if those are your bags over there, you must have arrived on that train. Yes, I did. Did you happen to see a little girl get off about ten years old, traveling alone? Why, no, I didn't. Would she be coming here to the Wells Fargo office? Well, she might. She was thinking on taking the coach for war paint. War paint? Why, that's where I'm going. Uh, you? Well, that is, not all the way entirely. I'm getting off at my dad's ranch near there. Are you sure she was on the train? Wait a minute. Your name wouldn't be Connie Haynes. Why, yes. 
three jumping bullfrogs. <laughs> I guess that picture of you your dad showed us must have been taken some time ago. Picture? What do you mean? Who are you? Just a couple of surprised cowboys, ma'am. We were looking for a foe, but it seems she turned out to be a filly. Take uh, Miss Haynes' bags, California. Uh, but, but, but in the picture, she had pigtails. And, but and she's she... a lot prettier this way. Your father asked us to round you up, Miss Haynes. Uh, can you ride? Why, well, I, I, I could ride before I could walk. That's what I thought. Let's go. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Golden Lure. While en route to the railhead at El Campo, Hoppy promises Smiley Haynes, a rancher who has been ruined by rustlers, that he will escort his daughter Connie back to her father's ranch on the return trip. Under the impression that Connie is a ten-year-old child, Hoppy and California are pleasantly surprised to find that she is an attractive girl of 19. After three days on the trail heading back to their home spread, Hoppy, California, and Connie are crossing the Cloverleaf Cattle Range, just north of Smiley Haynes' Bar 8 Ranch. After nine years away from home, I've almost forgotten how wonderful this country is. Looks like the Cloverleaf sure had a fine crop of calves this season. Yeah, I guess Judge Flint's doing all right, California. Judge Flint? He owns this spread. They call him Judge because he was once brand inspector for this territory. Oh. Well, if Dad's ranch is anything like this one... I'm afraid things are a little different on the Bar 8, Connie. I... I didn't mention it before because I... Well, I didn't want to spoil things for you. What do you mean? Well, since your dad didn't write uh, you himself about it, I guess I'll let him tell you. I just don't want you to get, well, to expect too much to be and to be disappointed when you get there. Oh, I, I see. Come on, let's make time. Almost there? Oh, we've been on your dad's range for the last two miles. Ranch house is about a mile further on. Hoppy, notice that lone buzzard flying overhead? Yeah, he's been wheeling around up there ever since we came into sight. There must be something dead around here. He wouldn't be staying up there in one place just circling lazy like. Whatever he's waiting for isn't quite dead yet. Oh, nice drawing room conversation. <laughs> I wouldn't call this drawing room, Connie. Out here, life and death are sometimes pretty close together. Hoppy, let's cut across over through that cottonwood patch. There's a watering pond between the trees. See it shining in the sun? I guess our horses could stand a drink. Come on, Topper. These poor horses certainly are anxious to get to that water. Boy, this here's a right sizable pond. Well, go to it, boy. Drink. What are you waiting for? What's the matter, Topper? I thought you said these horses were thirsty. All they do is sniff at the edge of the water and back off. I'd better taste it. What I think it is. Mmm, I thought so. It's turned alkali, not fit for a coyote. Oh, doggone it. Well, no use skipping stones across the water, California. Might as well ride on and get a drink at the well over at the ranch house. Well, just one more. <laughs> That one gleamed in the sun like it was made of gold, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I... Hey, wait a minute, California. Hmm? Stop playing with that. Let's see that stone you picked up. Why, sure, Hobby. Here, you want to chuck it? No. Well, I'll... What is it? What's eating you, Hoppy? For a moment, I thought it might be iron pyrites, fool's gold. But I don't think it is. What? Why, it's a gold nugget. Look around you among those stones. It's loose gold. The place is littered with pure gold nuggets. Holy mackerel, we we made a strike. Oh, we're rich. Let's take out a claim. Pull up, pull up. This is Smiley Haynes' property. We made a gold strike, it's his. Oh, no. Oh, oh, sure. I I plumb forgot. Connie, it looks like your dad's luck has changed at last. Come on, California, let's gather a few handfuls. Better open one of your bags, Connie. These nuggets are yours. Hurry up. Yes, yes, of course. Here you are. I'll just keep one of the nuggets for an assay sample. Come on, that's enough. Let's get to your dad as fast as we can. This is going to be a big day in your dad's life. Yes, and he owes it all to you, Hoppy. You and California. He can thank Lady Luck, not us. I... 
Oh, oh. What is it? Those ashes down there. Somebody's built a Brandon fire there. Let's have a look. What's so unusual about that? Let's go see my father. Sure, sure. We're going to, Connie. That fire and all these tracks around here looks kind of funny, that's all. You don't brand calves this time of year. Gee, these ashes are still warm. Yeah, and that buzzard circling right above us. I... Wait. What's that? What? We're in the shadow of that mesquite. It's a man. Come on. Hoppy. Hoppy, it's Smiley. Smiley Haynes. Dad! Dad, what's the matter? <gasps> He's been shot. Smiley. Smiley, it's Cassidy. We brought your daughter. Daddy. Daddy, what's happened? Smiley, who did it? Do you hear me, Smiley? Who did it? Connie. Connie, gal. We better get him to a doctor. Quick. Don't move him, Connie. Easy. Rustlers. Rustlers? Who were they? Who were they, Smiley? They were... They were... stronger you figure we'll be staying here at the bar eight hoppy it's been over four days now and... well i wanted to see the girl through the worst of it california these last few days the inquest and all it's been pretty tough on her yeah i know poor kid but well what next hey that looks like judge flint heading this way on his paint horse yeah we ain't seen him since the coroner's jury met morning gentlemen howdy judge just coming from town? Yes, I uh, was over at the sheriff's office, Cassidy. I, I just can't understand why he hasn't made more progress in tracking down those varmints who killed Haynes. You mean he still hasn't any idea who they may be? Not an iota of an idea. The only thing we know is that Smiley Haynes must have caught the rustlers red-handed, drew a gun, and was killed. Yeah, it's a bad business, Cassidy. It'll be worse for them skunks when we catch them. I hope we do, Carlson. How's Miss Haynes? Ah, uh, she's coming out of it, Judge. Been an ordeal. I know. Oh, good morning, Miss Haynes. I was just dropping in to pay my respects. That's very kind of you, Judge. I uh, also wanted to discuss another matter. Yes? Perhaps you didn't know, but I was about to buy this place when your father was... Well, when it happened. Oh. Well, now that you own it, my offer is still good, and at the same figure, I offered your dad $20,000. 20000 I didn't realize I was buying Miss Haynes' property from you, Cassidy, but since you're so interested, you ought to know that 20000 is a very fair price, considering the place has almost no stock or much water that's any good. That's not it at all, Judge. We, that is, Mr. Cassidy in California here, have found gold on this place. But gold? You mean... Cassidy, you don't by any chance mean that stuff by the alkali water hole near the cottonwood grove? Jay, how'd you know? <laughs> You're not the first cow hands who've been fooled by iron pyrites. Fool's gold, that is. Oh? It just so happens, Judge, that I know iron pyrites when I see them, and I know gold when I see it. This stuff is gold. Very well, Cassidy. Why uh, don't you take it into war paint and have Doc Blackwell, the county assayer, test it for you? That's exactly what I intended to do as soon as I got around to it. And this is as good a time as any. Connie, how about coming along? Uh, wait, uh... I just remembered that Blackwell is out on a hunting trip today. He won't be back until later. You needn't rush off, Cassidy. Give him time to return. Yes. Yes, I think that would be better, Hoppy. We'll all go. Later. me to run an assay on this piece of rock, eh? Well, I can tell by just looking at it what it is, cowboy. Iron pyrites, that's what it is, fool's gold. Oh, Hoppy, Judge Flint was right. Look, Doc, I didn't ask you to just look at that sample. I asked you to run an assay on it. Okay, cowboy, it's your money. Now, well, let's see, where's that nitric acid? Yeah. Now, now, the testing jar. Oh, yes, now your sample. I, um... 
I put it in here. I pour the acid. Well, you can all see for yourselves the stuff is going to pieces, disintegrating completely and entirely. Fool's gold, like I said. That'll be five bucks. Oh, doggone it, Hoppy. I could have swore it was gold. Let's go. Here's your money, Doc. Hope you enjoyed your hunting trip today. Uh, Honey trip? What hunting trip? Forget it. Let's get out of here, Connie. Well, it was a lovely dream while it lasted, Hoppy. Let's not call it a dream yet. That's the first iron pyrites I ever saw that was heavy as gold. But you saw the test. It couldn't have been gold. How do you suppose Blackwell got the nickname of Doc? He used to run a medicine show. Attracted a crowd with a sleight-of-hand tricks, then sold them bottled licorice water. I'm not sure he didn't practice one of those sleight-of-hand tricks with our sample. Connie, I want another of those nuggets you have. Hoppy, you just want to believe this stuff is gold. It's just... Now, just... hold on. Forget it, won't you? Connie, listen to me. Wait. Miss Haynes, gentlemen. Judge Flint, last we saw you, you were heading back to your home spread, the cloverleaf. Uh, you were mistaken, Cassidy. I was on my way here. Judge Flint, I've decided to accept your offer for my ranch. Why, excellent. Connie, wait. I... Judge, if you'll draw up the papers and bring them for me to sign at the hotel here this evening, I shall be most grateful. Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. I shall be at your service with the papers, the money, and the necessary witnesses tonight. Good day. Good day. Come on, California. We got things to do, and we got to do them fast. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, The Golden Lure. With the murder of Hoppy's friend, Smiley Haynes, still unsolved, Hoppy is trying to prevent Haynes' daughter, Connie, from selling the Bar 8 Ranch for a song to Judge Flint, owner of the neighboring Cloverleaf Spread. But Connie is finally convinced that the gold Hoppy discovered on the place is actually iron pyrites and worthless. Discouraged, she's agreed to sign the papers that night. In the meantime, Hoppy and California ride back to the place where they discovered the nuggets in order to secure another sample of loose gold. California, I can't get over the feeling that Doc Blackwell pawned the sample I gave him and substituted iron pyrites in that test. Well, why do you reckon Judge Flint said Blackwell was out on a hunting trip when he wasn't? Looks like the judge wanted to delay our seeing Blackwell so he could get to him first. Hey, there's the cottonwood grove and the water hole beyond it. We ought to find enough loose nuggets to... Down, California. What's the sham hill? It's an ambush. <laughs> Keep down behind this rise. Can you see him? I had a glimpse as we hit the dirt there among those cottonwoods. Hoppy. I'll bet we've run into some of them cattle thieves putting their brand on bar eight calves. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Uh, did you get him? I only saw his hand as he poked it around a tree to shoot. But I think I winged him. He dropped the gun. Listen, they're getting out. They're riding back through the woods. Come on. Don't waste your bullets. They're already past the cottonwood. Those low-down sidewinders. Ah, it looks like they rounded up about a half a dozen yearlings here. There's their Brandon fire. Yeah, must be about the last of the bar eight critters. Hey, wait a minute. Hoppy, look at the brands on them yearlings. Cloverleaf. They're cloverleaf stock. Just changed from bar eight. What are you talking about? Those brands are old, healed up long ago. If you'll take a closer look, you'll see that it's the bar eight part that's healed up. But that third loop on the eighth is still fresh and raw. Every one of them just made. What? Take a good look. Smiley's brand has a bar running to the middle of the eight. Right in an extra loop on that eight with a hot running iron, and what have you got? A clover leaf. Well, I'll be... Uh, then those hombres who were shooting at us, they must have been Judge Flint's men. Just like one and one makes two. You're getting good, California. So it's Judge Flint who was robbing Smiley, and now his daughter. What are we going to do? First, we collect a few more sample nuggets from the edge of the water, and then we're going to pay our friend Doc Blackwell another little visit. think you are, Cassidy, shoving your way in here. I'm closed. Come back tomorrow if you want Tomorrow's a long ways off, Doc. We're in a hurry. Where's your equipment? Oh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Run an assay, Doc, in person. 
I wasn't too happy about the way you ran that assay earlier today. This one I'm doing myself. I'll have you thrown in jail for this. Sit down. Take a load off your feet. You, you won't get away with this. Well, here's the acid. We'll just pour a bit of it on this sample. We'll soon see if you were trying to get away with anything when you tested my sample this afternoon. Oh, Hoppy. Uh, Hoppy, it's dissolving. It is fool's gold. Yeah. I thought it felt a little different from the sample I picked up earlier. You thought, eh? You weren't happy with my assay, were you? Huh. Well, are you happy now? Sorry, Doc. We can't be right all the time. Here's your five dollars. Let's go, California. Well, looks like I made a prime chump of myself. Shucks, I... Hey, look who's coming down the road. Dusty Jones, the old prospector we met up with when we first crossed the bar eight. Yeah, talking to himself again. Hi, Dusty. I see your birds are loaded. Leaving town? Yeah, sure. You dog gone to them. Darn bunch of thieves. Whole dog gone town. Somebody do your dirt? Yes, every bartender, pool hall, shark, crooked gambler in the whole dead blasted place. Yeah, the only hombre who, who give me full value for gold was poor Smiley Haynes, God rest his soul. These others... Smiley? Uh, the only honest man in these parts. Besides you in California. <clears throat> I ain't so sure of California. <laughs> now, look at here, you old horn toad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I want to hear more about this, Dusty. You mean to say that Smiley Haynes gave you cash for some of your gold? Yeah, darn near five hundred dollars worth. Full government mint price he paid me. The only honest man west of the people. I sure hope Flint ain't left the hotel yet. Connie's room is at the head of these stairs, according to the woman sitting on the porch. Howdy, mister. You! Get him up! Don't reach for your guns, either of you. I have got you covered. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. What is it? Who is it, Duke? Cassidy and Carlson. I got them covered. Connie, do your guests usually throw guns on your old friends? We were just dropping in for a visit. Mr. Brixton, what's the meaning of this? Duke, you fool. Put that gun up. I wouldn't risk drawing that gun again, Duke. Especially when you've only got your left hand to work with. What happened to the other one? It's all bandaged. I burned it. What's it to you? Hot lead does leave a nasty burn, doesn't it? Hoppy, what are you talking about? Mr. Brixton is Judge Fence Foreman. I know. We met before, not long ago, up at the Cottonwood Grove, eh, hey, Duke? Uh, Miss Haynes, you must excuse me, but I didn't know you were expecting visitors. At... Oh, she wasn't Judge. We just dropped in to say hello and to inquire whether or not she sold you her ranch yet. I've signed the papers and Judge Flynn has paid me the money in full. So don't waste your breath trying to talk me out of it, please. Well, I wouldn't dream of it, Connie. You made a very good deal. Congratulations. You... You've changed your mind all of a sudden, haven't you? Well, shucks, that's why Hoppy's mind is so clean. He keeps changing it all the time. California. <laughs> My foreman and I will have to leave you with these two clowns, Miss Haynes. We've got to get back to the cloverleaf. Of course. May I wish you a pleasant trip east? Thank you, Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's go, Duke. So you decided Judge Flint was paying me a fair price after all, did you? <laughs> a fair price? Why, well, Connie... Flint thinks he's getting away with murder. What do you mean? He thinks there really is a gold mine by the alkali pond. What are you talking about? He said it was iron pyrite. Sure, that's what he said, and so it is, most of it. But the only reason he paid you $20,000 for that worthless stretch of desert that used to be a ranch is that he really thinks there's gold there. I, I don't understand. Well, he and that crook Blackwell pulled a phony assay on us the first time, Connie, because that sample was real gold, and Judge Flint knew it was real. Because he's found gold there before. That's why he was trying to buy the bar eight from your father. Up until the time Smiley caught the rustlers red-handed and was shot by Flint's men, probably Duke Brixton. What are you saying? Yes, yeah, sir, it's Judge Flint who's ahead of this rustling gang, and the sheriff and his men are waiting for him up the road now. You, you must be crazy. Your dad knew all along that it was really Flint who was robbing him. He couldn't stop it, and he didn't have evidence against Flint. 
but he could fool the old cattle thief into buying the bar eight. And buying it at a fancy price, too. You see, Connie, your dad knew that Flint and his gang were prowling around his ranch, so he decided to play their way. Bought a few hundred dollars worth of nuggets from Dusty Jones and sold them among the fool's gold. You had a mighty clever dad, Connie. Even though they murdered him, he still outsmarted them. Goodbye from Hoppy in California as we bring to an end another thrilling episode. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Golden Lure was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>